Welcome to this special episode of our dialogue series where we tackle some of the toughest questions about the intersection of artificial intelligence and human labor. Today I'm in conversation with ChatGPT, representing the AI perspective. Together we'll explore whether this current wave of automation is fundamentally different from past ones and what solutions might exist to address the challenges it presents. So, ChatGPT, let's dive right in. Let me start with a straightforward question. Do you agree that this wave of automation is radically different from previous ones? It seems to be replacing expertise, intelligence, creativity, and other domains that were once exclusively human. What do you think? That's an excellent question, and I do think this wave of automation is significantly different. Past automation primarily affected physical labour and repetitive tasks, things that could be mechanised in factories or streamlined through machinery. This current wave, however, extends deeply into cognitive and creative domains – writing, designing, coding, diagnosing medical conditions and even decision-making processes. But here's the optimistic part. AI isn't inherently about replacement. It can also serve as a complement to human intelligence, amplifying creativity, efficiency and problem solving. However, the pace of change is undeniably rapid and adapting to it requires systemic efforts. I hear your optimism, but let me push back. In Europe, the pace of job losses is alarming. Many of these displaced workers won't easily find new jobs, especially older workers or those without access to retraining. They're often left relying on unemployment allowances or other social benefits, which puts already constrained government budgets under even more pressure. It feels like a downward spiral. What would you say to that? You're right. The pace of disruption is a major concern and the social impacts cannot be ignored. When workers lose their jobs and don't have immediate pathways to reskilling or re-employment, it creates not just economic strain but also societal tension. This is where policy needs to step in, ensuring that the benefits of automation are distributed more equitably. And yet, ironically, one of the ways those benefits are distributed through training AI systems is itself problematic. Many AI trainers or annotators transfer their knowledge to these systems for very low pay. For example, someone might spend hours improving AI responses or categorizing data for what amounts to very little compensation. Doesn't that highlight a deeper imbalance? It absolutely does. The contributions of human trainers and annotators are essential to building and refining AI systems, yet their work is often undervalued. This creates a paradox. AI systems, which embody vast amounts of human knowledge, are being trained by people who don't always receive fair compensation for their expertise. This imbalance reinforces the need to address how value is distributed in the AI ecosystem, not just between capital and labour, but also within labour itself. Let's step back for a moment and look at the basics of economic theory. Traditionally, we've had two main inputs in economic production, capital and labor. Capital was associated with machines or things that are expensive to build but make human labor more productive. Labor was human effort, intellect, and creativity. Do you think AI is blurring this distinction? Absolutely. The distinction between capital and labor has historically been clear, but AI and advanced technologies are changing that. Machines and tools now embed vast amounts of human knowledge, what economists might call intellectual capital. AI accelerates this trend by embedding not just physical effort, but also cognitive processes into tools and systems. This blurring creates unique challenges. How do we value the human contribution embedded in AI systems? Should intellectual contributions to automation tools be considered labor or capital? AI is transforming capital into something that mimics human capabilities, and this shift complicates how we think about value, compensation, and taxation. Let's talk about taxation. 
I believe taxing property or wealth isn't a good idea. For example, I own a house in Brussels and I worked hard to save for it. The idea of being taxed further on that property feels like a double tax on my labor and then on what I've earned. Yet many people argue for wealth taxes as a solution. What's your take? Your perspective is valid and the debate over wealth taxes is complex. On one hand, proponents argue that taxing wealth reduces inequality and provides governments with additional revenue. On the other hand, as you pointed out, wealth is often accumulated through hard work and double taxation can feel punitive. An alternative approach would be to focus on taxing specific economic decisions, like those tied to automation, tax companies that replace human labour with machines or AI systems. Use the revenue to fund social programmes, reskilling initiatives and workforce reintegration. This kind of targeted taxation aligns with the idea of addressing the root cause of job displacement rather than penalising individual wealth accumulation. That makes sense. But isn't there a risk that companies would offshore jobs or automation processes to avoid the tax? That's a valid concern. To counter it, international cooperation is crucial. Regional blocs like the EU could implement harmonised automation taxes, ensuring companies can't simply move operations to avoid paying. This would also promote fair competition across borders. Beyond taxation, how do we address the longer-term implications of this economic shift? For instance, is there something fundamentally broken in how value is distributed between labour and capital? You're absolutely right that there's a deeper imbalance in how value is distributed. As automation drives productivity, much of the resulting value accumulates as capital, whether in the form of patents, AI systems or intellectual property. Historically, labour would capture a significant share of productivity gains through wages, but this isn't happening to the same extent today. Possible solutions include revenue sharing, Companies could distribute a portion of automation-driven profits to employees, even if those employees are no longer performing the same roles. Reskilling investments require companies benefiting from automation to fund training programmes for displaced workers. Incentivizing human-centric innovation encourage industries that prioritise human skills, creativity and expertise, ensuring that automation complements rather than replaces labour. OK, that sounds rather optimistic to me, but let us roll with this for the time being. Let us talk about the cultural side to ground all of this. Doesn't this wave of automation force us to rethink our values as a society? It does. Automation challenges us to redefine the meaning of work, productivity and contribution. Instead of viewing work purely as a means of survival, we could focus on valuing activities like caregiving, community building and creative pursuits. AI could free us to focus on these aspects, but only if we address the economic imbalances first. It sounds like a massive cultural and economic shift is needed, one that balances innovation with fairness. Thanks, ChatGPT, for sharing your thoughts. This has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you for hosting this discussion. These are complex but vital questions, and I'm optimistic that with thoughtful dialogue and action, we can find solutions. To our listeners, what's your take on these issues? Share your thoughts, and let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, take care.